Well, hello, good morning, and welcome to Camilla and I. And this morning, we're setting out to photograph dragonflies. And if you watched last week's episode, we were using the 600 millimeter to photograph dragonflies. Well, of course, this is totally unnecessary. And dragonflies are quite a good beginner subject because you don't need 600 millimeters to photograph dragonflies. You can get away perfectly simply with a 70 to 200 like this one, or a macro lens, 90 millimeter lens such as this. The only thing you have to be able to do is get in close enough to your subject. So you have to be stealthy and maneuver carefully. That's the key thing with dragonflies. And of course, the first thing is you have to find the darn things in the first place. And uh, that's why we're at King Charles Pond. Blackmore Copse, Wiltshire, here in the UK, because we know there are dragonflies in this pond. <laughs> We've seen them. Well, we saw them last week with the 600 millimeter. And indeed, the 200 millimeter We've gone for this week, we've chosen the 70 200 millimeter, and we've also popped on a polarizing filter as well, a 77 millimeter polarizer on this, just to uh, reduce the glare, because the dragonflies come out usually when it's really hot. So uh, yeah, it's great for exposure. If anything, we get overexposed. So normally we have to come down all minus one, in order to get the detail still in the dragonfly. So settings today on Camilla and I, well I said we've already got the polarizer on and we've got the little trap door open and we've already twiddled the polarizer, fiddled with the uh, dial to get the best polarizing effect for the water already. So we've already focused in and given the filter a little tweak so that we get the best polarization we can at this stage. And now I've shut the hatch up again. Um, we're on autofocus until we get in on the subject. Sometimes when we get in on the subject, we then switch to direct manual focus, the override focus button, and that uh, enables us to fine tune the focusing. We have focus peaking on in camera so that we can see when the subject is in sharp contrast to the background it will come up illuminated in red and then we go on to a full focal range because we want to be we could get a really close subject or we could get a subject that's a couple of meters away say in flight then we've got the uh, optical stabilization of course optical stabilization on and uh, we're using mode 3 because we are using a rapid erratic motion usually so uh, yeah, mode three. So those are the settings. And um, then in the actual viewfinder, I've gone for one three thousand two hundredth of a second, uh, just like uh, in-flight bird mode. And I've started at f3.5, just a little bit wider, because um, try and get a little bit more of the dragonfly in rather than go for totally that 2.8 and um, that will vary between ooh, f3.5 and uh, f8 because sometimes you want to get the whole wings of the dragonfly in focus so uh, you've got to be careful there then um, i've got my usual perch bird setting which again just drops me to one five hundredth of a second f5.6 it's just a very good static subject setting and i use it all the time so uh, you'll often see a photo on Camilla and I that's taken one five hundred second f5.6. In this situation, it's a sort of get out of jail free card. So those are the settings. Now let's go over to the technique of photographing dragonflies. I can talk to you at the moment because there's not many around. I've only seen one so far this morning. The temperature has to rise before the dragonflies come out. So again, great beginner subject because you don't have to set the alarm clock at ridiculous o'clock. I mean, I got here at 
nine o'clock this morning and I'm not really expecting mass dragonflies to fly until about ooh, 10 o'clock. Okay, anyway, I'll go through a bit of the technique now approaching the subject. So if you've got a subject off in the, uh, in the actual pond and it's flying around, well then you need an in-flight setting and it's very similar to in-flight setting for a bird in flight. So uh, we're trying to pick it off as it flies around and we try and judge the pattern of the in-flight uh, movement and we literally just follow it around and I actually use tracking expand flexible spot and also I still use zone as well just like birds in flight sometimes it's better to have a bigger box to pick them up first of all so I vary between those two settings for in-flight shots and you we're on all oh, one three thousand two hundred of a second at the moment and that will actually freeze the wing beats so uh, anything from one three thousand two hundred up to oh, one eight thousand will freeze the actual wing beat so uh, I mean their their wings vibrate at uh, oh, loads of times per second I can't remember what it is now it's loads of times per second so you want to be on a high shutter speed now if you're lucky enough to get in close and you see a subject don't rush up to it like so you've really got to stealthily move into position as slowly as you can and lift the camera up no jerky movements you've just got to be absolutely precise and this is where you can drop the shutter speed if the subject is perched they still make tiny little head movements and things like that so it's still best to have a reasonable shutter speed and then you just squeeze off the frames as you get closer and it's surprising how close you can get but it's a good test of how stealthy and how much in control you can be so it's a great subject for wildlife in general to get you used to that slow steady approach to the subject so uh, yeah anyway I haven't got a subject at the moment so uh, I'm just practicing for you okay <laughs> brilliant so you get the idea slow and steady Ooh, nice so like all wildlife subjects it's well worth getting to know your subject and this is particularly true with dragonflies because they don't fly all year round unfortunately mostly dragonflies fly between late April May right through to October but if you get a guidebook such as uh, this one the field guide to uh, dragonflies they tell you when the dragonflies are likely to come out I mean this year we've had a particularly cold wet spell and this has concentrated the dragonflies out at this particular time of year that's why it's particularly good at the moment and that's why we're here photographing dragonflies whereas birds and uh, whatnot it becomes very bright conditions and it's very difficult to photograph birds with the amount of foliage out now at this time of year so this is the time when we move on to butterflies dragonflies and insect photography in general because um, it becomes far more difficult to photograph our feathered friends so uh, we turn to the dragonfly so uh, you can get some great photographs of the dragonfly and you don't need really expensive equipment so uh, although this is pretty expensive okay I hope you can still hear me all right of course as soon as you start filming Camilla and I somebody gets out with a chainsaw <laughs> and as usual with wildlife it's uh, great 
to get to eye level with your subject so uh, yeah get down low classic case in wildlife photography yeah so we're just skimming the top of the reeds here and uh, yeah we're just poking over over the top and sometimes it's a good idea to include a bit of foliage with your subject and indeed shoot through the foliage so you get a sort of natural vignette around your subject and it can work very well a sort of natural frame now we've got a dragonfly that's hovering around and i don't know what it is so uh, i must get a shot of it today so uh, yeah <laughs> and uh, look it up in the book And the other thing we love about dragonflies is they return to a perch quite often. They get a favourite perch in the pond. And if you're lucky, they'll fly up, do a little lap of the lake, catch an insect and come back to the same perch. Absolutely brilliant. So what a subject. I mean, how many subjects in wildlife often return to the same spot? Well, quite a lot actually, but this does it habitually. So, uh, great subject, the dragonfly for returning to the same spot. So we love dragonflies. Oh, beautiful. Of course, we've got to stop first. Some of them just don't stop all day long. They just hover the entire day and float around the lake. So you have to capture them in flight. And that's a bit more tricky. But when So what a great subject dragonflies are. Absolutely superb. Another great subject to uh, get your eye in on wildlife photography. And uh, yeah, this is why we do it on Camilla and I. It really sharpens your uh, reflexes, particularly for the in-flight shots. So uh, yeah, why not give dragonflies a go? Um, yeah. Dragonflies are great. I mean, we love dragonflies on Camilla and I. I mean, they perch up regularly on little spots, little predometries reaching out into the, uh, into the lakeside. And uh, yeah, they're quite numerous. You have to practice your skills. You have to uh, be stealthy, approach the subject slowly. And uh, yeah, you have to, uh, hone your technique in on your camera so uh, you become one with your camera and lens and uh, yeah what a tremendous subject so uh, yeah dragonflies butterflies we like in particular as well certain times of the year so uh, yeah you have to experiment around you have to try out all your settings try out all your angles a marvelous subject to start with Anyway, thanks for watching an episode of Camilla and I here today at King Charles Pond, Blackmore Copse, Wiltshire, UK. And uh, yeah, what a superb spot. What a lovely location. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye from Camilla and I. <laughs>